Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and install the Samsung 990 Evo Plus in your PC. I'm going to show you the installation process and how to install Windows, or if you're using this as an additional drive in your system, how to get it recognized in Windows and how to use it properly. Now, for this, I'm using the top slot on your motherboard, and I generally recommend that's the one that you should use. Remove the heat sink from the top, then put the drive into the slot and slot it down there, taking care to remove any stickers from thermal pads in the system. Now, if you look at this, you'll see from the motherboard manual that there are multiple different slots on this motherboard. You might well have the same. So I want to talk briefly about that because you'll see some run at different speeds. They are backwards compatible though, so you could run this Gen 4 drive in a Gen 5 slot and it will be fine, it will still run at the right speed. But if you want to install multiple drives into your system, it might be worth looking here for additional drive ports. You can see there are three here on the left hand side and then an additional two on the right hand side. I've done a video on why these drives might not all run at the same speeds, depends on the motherboard, so I'll link to that video in the description. But if you want additional drives for, let's say, installing your OS or your games, then this can be a good thing to do. You can see I've got several drives in here, including the Samsung 990 Pro, for example. They just slot into place and then are held in place with clips. And then you need to make sure you remove the stickers from the thermal pads above and below the drives before reseating the heat sink. These shieldings can actually really help with the dissipation of heat and keeping the drives running cool and effectively. And so it's well worth using them and making sure they're put back into place after you've installed your drives. So I would recommend that. I've actually done a video showing how much difference these can make. On other motherboards, you might find the setup slightly different. So on this live mixer motherboard, for example, if I remove that top heat shielding, you'll see underneath there's no thermal pad there, but also there's no clip to hold the drive in place. Instead, it's done with an M2 screw, which you should find included with your motherboard. If you don't have that, I'll leave links to additional ones you can buy in the description. Now you can see I've done this all outside the build before I've mounted the motherboard into the case. But if you're installing the Samsung drive as an additional one, you can do it when the motherboard's in your system. Just make sure you power it off first of all, so you're not in danger. Once that's all done, you can then put your system together, assuming you've built everything else. And if you need a guide on how to build a gaming PC, then check my playlists out because you'll find one useful there. This is the Evo RGB in Lamborghini edition. And next we're going to go on to installing Windows and then I'll show you what to do as it an additional drive. First of all, we need to download the Windows 11 media creation tool. What we're going to do here is do this on a separate PC. You can actually do it on your phone. I've shown a guide on how to do that. But you need a separate PC and a USB drive. I used a 32 gigabyte drive for this, by the way. Then you go through and use this tool and run it until you get to this point, installing it on the USB drive. Now it takes a little bit of time to do this, but what we're doing is basically prepping this so you can then plug it into your newly built PC, run the tool, install Windows onto the Samsung drive, and then boot from that instead. Once you get through this process, you'll see the drive is ready. You can then remove it from there and then plug it into the back of your freshly built PC. In this instance, you can see I'm using an Aorus motherboard, but we're plugging it in there and then going through that. What you should find is it should start to boot using that. So it will detect that as the boot drive and it will boot into the creation tool process. Select your relevant country and language from the drop down and then click to follow the steps on the screen. What we're going to do here is pick Windows 11 Home, accept these and then click on custom install Windows only. Now I've actually used this drive already. I'm using the Samsung 990 Pro for demonstration purposes here, but the logic's the same. So it's already got things on it. So I need to format it and delete anything that's already on there and then set it as a new drive. So obviously you won't have this issue if it's a brand new drive, but you might find that if you do have partitions on there, then you'll have to delete them and then format the drive so it's ready to take it. You create a new partition on there during that process, you can see you click new. Now I've got multiple partitions on there. Then you click next and it will start to copy the files across. So we're now installing that onto the Samsung drive from the USB stick. Now there'll be a point in the process where it starts to reboot and it will show you this. When it gets into that position and it's about to reboot, so just as it does, 
remove that thumb drive. If you don't do that, it will then reboot into the Windows creation tool again, which obviously will be confusing because you'll end up stuck in a loop. So once that's removed, you should find that it then boots into Windows and follows the final steps of the installation process. So you can see we've now got a different screen here. So it's basically completing the installation, but from the drive itself, rather than from that thumb drive we created. So you then need to follow even more steps and make sure you're connected to the internet while doing so. I'm using an ethernet cable plugged in for this. If this is your first PC build or the first steps in it, I would recommend using an ethernet cable because it just makes sure everything goes smoothly. You can then download the Wi-Fi drivers once you get into Windows if you're using Wi-Fi as your preference and that's what you want to do. If you're planning on using this drive as an additional drive, I want to show you some other things because you might well already have Windows installed and you're just going to use this for other things like games. So if you go into Windows, we need to make sure we can see it. And if you open File Explorer, you might find the drive is just not there. You can see I've got several other drives, but the Samsung drive is just not available in here. What you need to do is press the Start button and then type disk and you'll see create and format disk partitions. Do that and it'll open up disk management tool and hopefully you should see the disk initialize in the system. So it pops up, it recognizes there's a new drive and it shows it there. You can see it with a black label on it as disk two. Right click that and click new symbol volume and then follow the wizard steps. Essentially you need to watch out for a black drive there where the other ones are blue because it's basically just needs to be formatted and set up ready to be used. So you just need to do a quick format and then assign it a drive letter. And then what you should find is it will then pop up in the Explorer. And if you go into this PC, you should then see it is then available to be used and then run. Now, I'd also recommend just doing a speed test. So using Crystal Dismark and Task Manager and Hardware Monitor, I've selected the disk from the drop down in this process, selected it as an NVMe drive, and then I'm going to run a benchmark on it. This is a free tool, basically allows you to test the drive to make sure it's running at the right speed. This ensures that you put it in the right place in your system, that everything's running as expected, and that you're getting maximum speed out of it. You can basically just go through this really easily. It's a synthetic benchmark, so it's just a simple test, and I would recommend doing it. I've got a separate guide on this if you need a bit more in-depth detail on it, but I'll leave links in the description to the tools I use. And you can basically see what speed you're getting from this drive and make sure everything's working properly. Hope this has helped get the drive installed. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.